Hello, welcome everyone. It's Property Zone Live again. Um, today we are very honored to be able to invite a guest for today, Ms. Raspberry. And uh, the topic for today is how to recover rents in area from tenants. As you know, um, you have a lot of property investors. Okay. And uh, when we will buy property for investment, a lot of people just look at our rent to you. They calculate we have 4%, we have 5%, mm -hmm. we can receive rental how much every month. We should be happy about it. Mm. But when it's come to completion of the property or when it comes to dealing with actual tenants, mm -hmm. sometimes in reality it may not be a perfect situation. Yeah. Correct, They're right? All the time. So <laughs> I, I still remember in fact yesterday, out of the blue, <clears throat> you were just um, having a dinner with friends mm -hmm. and the topic came up. <clears throat> the topic is the hassle, <clears throat> the stress they have to go through if the tenant didn't pay on time. Mm. In fact, one of the one of my friends said that. In order to get rid of, in per se, the tenant who has been staying in his place for what, one year, but late for rent for eight months, he have to actually rent another flat for him, oh, wow. paying <laughs> advance in three months, mm. help him to move everything out of his property. So now we have come to a situation that no, a lot of people are not prepared. Yeah, yeah. Right when it comes to see, they think they signed agreement, tenancy agreement, mm. everything is okay. So sometimes they know what they can or cannot do, should or should not do from the legal way. So I think we are honored we are, you know, we are able to get some uh, insight from you. Okay. So um, just a few questions. Um, as you know, when we actually uh, get a tenant for a property, normally the first thing to do is we, we sign a tenancy agreement. Yes. So That's right. what would be the content of the tenancy agreement in general? Okay, in general, the tenancy <coughs> agreement should contain the basic thing. Uh, number one is the duration. So when the tenancy will start, okay, okay, and yep. when the tenancy will end, okay, this must be clear in the agreement. Okay. Secondly, what is the rent amount? It must be specified. Okay. okay? And of course, you have to have the property details. Okay. Okay. That's fine. And uh, <coughs> in the event, let's say there is a default, like the tenant don't pay. Okay. What should happen? Yep. All this should be stated in the tenancy agreement. Okay. Uh, one more thing we usually add uh, where uh, it's actually notice. Okay? Notice, all right. Okay, what I mean by notice is this. Let's say the landlord intends to sell the property, okay? During uh, the tenancy period. During the tenancy period. All right. Okay, and uh, the, the, the new, uh, the, the buyer who wants to buy don't want the buyer, uh, don't want the tenant to be there. So what happens? So that's why notice period is very important. If you say, state that, the landlord can give you three months notice, okay, and yep. can after that tell you, you know, but that we don't want to go ahead with this tenancy right. agreement, you know, at least the tenant gets that three months notice and can look for somewhere else yep. to stay, right? So uh, it's vice versa. So even the tenant, if let's say they want to suddenly quit from the tenancy agreement, they should be able to give the three months notice. So if let's say the tenancy agreement is for one year, after six months, mm -hmm. they say they want to move out and give the three months notice to the landlord. Can the landlord forfeit the deposit because they have not fulfilled the tenancy agreement? If they have not uh, fulfilled, obviously that is a breach. Yeah. So okay. obviously they can uh, claim for the deposit back. But what I'm saying is if they give three months notice, so they are in accordance with the agreement, yeah. So uh, then the, the, the landlord cannot be asking for the deposit. Okay. So there's a difference. <coughs> so only okay. if they breach <coughs> okay, the agreement, then the deposit can be uh, taken back. All All right. Right. Uh, what other things uh, that is very essential that uh, most of us uh, as landlords don't do is background checks. Background check. How to do actually. Exactly. I want we to know also because I'm only... ask for maybe three months pay slip from the tenant. Which is actually not sufficient. You have to also do either a CITOS okay. or a CCRIS. So these two, CITOS and CCRIS, okay, everything is available online. All right. Okay, to do to get a report out of this. Okay. Uh, it tells you whether the tenant can pay or not, whether they have any other, they owe anyone else money or not. 
you know, whether there is any uh, legal proceeding against them, whether they have loans that they have not paid. So you know in advance how credible is your talent. So you don't get into that situation. So you've cleared uh, the doubt. The other thing uh, that uh, things that you should, uh, as a landlord, uh, look into is make sure uh, the tenant, let's say it's a business, you're letting out uh, your property, it's a commercial property, it's a business, <coughs> to see whether it's legal, whether it's right. legit. So ask for the <coughs> Form 49 of the SSM mm -hmm. and other uh, documents okay, relating to their the business, business nature. All right. Okay, so all this, even what they, what are they working as? You know, what is the business for? We actually tell you whether they can pay. Or <coughs> you see, so yeah. So, uh, talking about the CITOS, let's say residential residential property. So, if just imagine, I give you an example. I'm the landlord. Mm. You are tenant coming. You want to rent my place. How do I uh, conduct a CITOS secret search? Do I do it my, on my end or I ask you to do it and then you give me the report? Normally, what? Well, Usually, the, uh, it is the landlord because you want to know, right? Yeah. So, if <coughs> you do it, you know, uh, of course, you cannot be burdening the tenant to tell them, to, can you please give me your CITOS secrets? Okay. Right? So, it is your check, your prior check that, uh, that I want to know whether this tenant can pay me or But not. we need to get a consent for, because this is about personal... Oh, no, no, no. It's, uh, anybody can do CITOS or secrets. Or you can even engage a lawyer to do a CITOS and secrets. Okay. Yeah. That means I can do the CITOS secrets background check on you without you knowing? You, of, of course, have to ask for the IC of the person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all this, whenever you enter into an agreement <coughs> with anyone, to see whether they can pay, they cannot pay, they have any outstanding uh, legal proceedings and all that, you can do that. Okay. Yes. Sitos and secrets, I think probably less than 10% of the property owner will do it. Yes. Yeah, because <laughs> what we look at, we look at the three months deposit, two months deposit and the utility deposit. Yes. Okay. Uh, let me pause for a while. Okay. For those of our friends who just tuned in, hi Jeff, hi Sean, hi Venus. Uh, for those of you who are watching, I think, sh please share this because you may not be facing a problematic tenant. You probably later, hopefully not, but you might have a chance to yes. uh, en encounter this kind of situation and you want to know the best way to deal with it. And you feel that some of your friends or colleagues uh, may find this session useful if you want to deal with uh, tenants. Mm. Share this and just share out the information. All right? Yes. And next question. I think this is very common and a lot of people want to know is what if, what if, the tenant is late for paying rent. Is it a time period? If it's over how many days, what should I do and all this thing normally? If they're late even for a month, you <coughs> yourself can actually issue a letter saying demanding, can you please pay the rent? Okay. If they are try to keep it less than two months, because at least you can, you know they have breached the, uh, the agreement, you can actually keep a claim for the uh, deposit that you have put in. All right. Uh, <coughs> if they have breached more than that month, there means few months they have not paid, then uh, usually you engage a lawyer, they will send out a letter of demand. Is it expensive? Uh, not really, it depends on which lawyer you choose. Oh, yeah, I thought it's, it's a regulator fees? Uh, not really, it depends, really. yeah. Okay. Yeah, it depends on which Range? Uh, range should be, uh, uh, I think all other lawyers will kill me if I give <laughs> <a> range. <laughs> usually we don't open a price like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hi, Norit. Uh, okay, let's talk about layman term. If I have actually a tenant late for paying rent, mm. actually in the story I mentioned about John, pay the deposit, rent for two months, and then late, not picking up calls, mm. and they go to up, he's not always not there. Mm. So sometimes, as an owner, we are frustrated, we are stressed, and we find to find out, we still have the urge to change the lock and then put a new lock and lock everything and throw everything out of the unit. <laughs> then suddenly think about, wait, you know, in Malaysia, we still abide by law and then there are certain things we can do and cannot do. Yes. Of course, should and should not do. I think changing the lock and lock yes, the tenant is, is definitely, definitely under should not do, right? Unlawful and okay. you cannot do. <clears throat> okay. If you want to claim for repossession, repossession. that means you want <clears throat> the property back, you will actually have to have a court order. You can first lodge, lodge a police report also. Okay. Okay. Uh, what you need is a court order to gain uh, to gain uh, the property back, lah, To be repossessed. I mean, to obviously, lah, to get back the property. 
Yeah. So it means that if today I'm facing a tenant late at paying rent, mm. not responsive, go to the unit, it's always not there. Maybe it's there, it didn't pick, open the door or whatsoever. Mm. So I make a police report. Yes. And then wait for the court order. Normally the court order, I have to do it myself or no? Oh, you have to <coughs> engage a lawyer to, uh, to get a court order. Uh, you'll be seeking for two. One thing is for uh, the money. Right, the, the, the rent, rent in areas, yeah, outstanding paid, rent, the outstanding okay. rate, uh, rent, and also, uh, obviously, to get back if they are still in the property, yeah. get that property. So uh, these are the two things lah, that you have to engage a lawyer to do. So what happened <coughs> is when uh, there is one way that lawyers usually do, they do a writ of uh, distress. It's called. So writ what, of distress. Yeah. So w R I T. Yeah. W R I T. So okay. what happens is uh, when they get this. They can get the bailiff of the court to come over to that property and seize whatever movable, all right, to uh, to to sort of let's say to uh, whatever your rent amount is due, mm -hmm. right? So uh, they are able to claim back lah. That means they sell off the movables. Okay. Okay. If it's more than ten thousand, they have to appoint an auctioneer. Right. So if less than that, they can sell off the bailiff. They have to have the inventory list okay. and uh, sell off the uh, valuables to be able to get back your rent money. So you say two things. One is actually make a police report. One is to engage a lawyer to... Yes. Do we have to do the police report and then bring the police report and engaging a lawyer or can do it simultaneously? You can do it simultaneously. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. Next. Uh, there are other options as well. Uh, All right. Uh, basically, if let's say the rent amount due, it is uh, very high. Okay, you know it is worth. Uh, you know, for if you said eight months, let's say it's two thousand and sixteen thousand. Uh, the other way, because essentially your tenancy agreement is a contract. Tenancy of course, yes, yes contract. It's a yeah. Contract. Okay. So you will go to civil court. You will go to court. All right, and uh, you will. Uh, basically try to get uh, an order for breach of the contract. Order so for the breach of contract, yes. okay. So once you get an order, right, and the court has decided yes, it favours you, you take that order and ask your lawyer to go ahead to recover. It's called execution of the order. Execution of the order. So there uh, are ways of executing the order as well. One of it is by way of uh, freezing the tenant's account and getting back okay. whatever is due to you, legally due to you. Okay. Okay. All right. The other way of execution is uh, to essentially ask a court order to uh, to take out a warrant tangkap. Wow. Oh, yes. <laughs> so there are a few things. If let's say you want to execute the order, the execute the judgment. Okay. All right. So uh, these are more uh, aggressive moves. Right? All right. But yeah. can be done. Can legally. be done. Can be done. Does it spell done. out that your rent in here has to be above how many months or it doesn't matter? It doesn't so as matter. As long as more than as one month or two months, it doesn't matter. Uh, it, it's more uh, cost effective if it's more than a few months. So okay. you're okay. not going to take an, uh, a estate. civil okay. action if it's just less for 5000 you You'll be wasting your money on uh, legal fees, of course. Okay. Uh, that we can tell you. Lah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So these so, are the ways. So, okay. yeah. So basically, just, just summarise in two ways. If a tenant is late in paying rent, not responsive, not replying the messages, not picking up a call, you go to the unit, no, always not there. So making a police report to state the case, going to a lawyer to get a... make sure that uh, they, they can come, get a, a legal court. legal notice first, All right. a notice of demand, and then they will go proceed with uh, two ways. Lah. There are two ways. Another way is go to the unit, Okay, process the thing. If it's uh, more than ten thousand, they need an auctioneer. But whatever they recoup is the value of the things, yes. the contents inside. Yes. But the second is go after the person, yes. freeze the account, yes. recover whatever they want. So it means that another important things we can include it must be the bank account from the exactly. So in the tenancy agreement, you can also ask uh, the tenant to state, uh, you know, uh, you know, the bank account and all these details because it will help you when later on you want to exit. Let's say they default and you want to execute the order. So you can use this and say yeah, it's stated here, you know, the uh, tenant's uh, uh, account details and all that. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So, so just pause for a while, okay. Uh, for those who are tuning in, uh, 
share and make this uh, post viral. I, this week we are actually giving out a prize. It's a Sony wireless speaker. Wow. <laughs> yeah, Sony wireless speaker to be given out. People with the most share uh, will be lucky enough to walk away for this prize. And the annou announcement will be made next week. Okay. So, um, I think when it comes to dealing with tenants, they are late in paying rent. Just now you mentioned that there's a term called garnishment, right? Yes, this and, is the... And can you explain to us, because uh, we, we are just laymen and we're trying to find out okay. the legal way. Yes, uh, garnishment, as I said earlier, is an execution process that uh, lawyers will do. So when they get an order, uh, mm -hmm. as I said, uh, they will serve it onto the bank. Okay. And the bank will freeze the tenant's account. Oh, this is so the that's why the information of the tenant's uh, uh, bank details are is important. So uh, they will freeze the account, and they whatever due to you, they will uh, obviously pass it to your lawyer, and your lawyer will pass it to you. Mm. Yes. So that's how legally it works. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, one other things that I note that uh, landlords don't uh, really know is that they actually have right to actually. Uh, enter the property for inspections. They don't usually state this in the tenancy agreement. Okay. Yes, so you can actually go in to repair works. You can always state this, you know. So, uh, it's not uh, unlawful, but you can know, you know, what is the business nature. Let's say it's a business, mm. right? What, you know, is it going business well? Is you kind of get hints, you know, when you enter in for inspection and yeah. all this stuff. Yeah. Business probably is easier because they open door the business, I think, Everybody from the street can go in. Yes, but we're yes. talking about residential property, so that means the tenant has to be there as well. Because yes, to you avoid of course, that, you of course have there. to give at least a, a few hours, 48 hours, I believe, notice to the tenant that you're coming over, and you have to get you know consent to you know, actually. You not you cannot just open the lock, you know. You can't. But can the owner actually keep a pair of the master key? Uh, it, normally, in this case, in normal scenarios, they usually keep. But uh, you're still not allowed to use the master key to enter, enter into the without property. the tenant's notice the, the, and then your yes, consent. Yes, tenant's okay. consent. All you right. cannot do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course. Yes. Right. Okay. Hi, Steffi. Thanks for coming in. Okay. Um, last question. I think just now we will discuss about share office, co-working space. Now everything we will know about it. Yes. Right. So sometimes, let's say I have a three-bedroom apartment. All mm. right. I ran out to this tenant, seems to be nice, and then he paid. Can he allow Toko to sublet it using this so-called share office? Okay, can you share with us more about this? Okay, so basically if they want to sublet it, yeah. right, they also need, you also need to put in your tenancy agreement whether you agree to it. They cannot sublet it if you don't agree to it. If your tenancy okay. agreement says, no, you can't. Why? Because where if in the event, right, they sublet, the tenant sublet it to another tenant and that tenant defaults. So who bears the liability? Mm -hmm. So always stipulate all this in your tenancy agreement. So it's clear that okay. you know, your tenant, you are the one who sublet it, you are the one who bears the responsibility. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not going to directly claim from the subtenant. I'm going yeah. to claim from you as the tenant. Okay. Like, yeah. Let's say the senior is this. I'm the landlord, mm. assuming you are the, the, the tenant I'm doing. Okay. okay? So you rent the place for let's say three thousand, all right. Mm -hmm. So I'm dealing with you, and then during my inspection, when I coming in, right, then I realize there's another person staying in another room. Mm. So let's say, you know, through my inspection and through the observation, I know this is a subtenant. Mm. Is it better for me to include a subtenant and to renew a new tenancy agreement, or I say to the mate, I, I talk to you now. I don't care. I'm only dealing with you. Mm. Which one's better? Uh, it depends on your uh, tenancy agreement again, whether right. you have actually agreed to a subtenant. Okay. Right? If you have agreed, then uh, you know, you, obviously the terms are there. Okay. But if you suddenly discover and you know, if it's not in the tenancy agreement also about it's not the subtenant, a surprise. Uh -huh. it's a surprise, then it's always wiser to have a supplemental agreement. It means you enter another agreement with your tenant uh, on that arrangement so that everything is clear. Mm, yes. Okay. Okay, yeah. so um, I think we pretty much cover most of the thing. Hi, Ken. Hi, Jerry. Thank you for watching. Thank you for, uh, for being with us. So I'm just go over uh, again what we have covered for today because some of the things may be new to us.
first collecting as a as an owner if you're renting a property of course proper tenancy agreement is definitely essential yes and also the details that you mentioned don't forget to do a CITOS and secret check right yes. if you want to better protect your rights and also include the rights for inspection of the property on a periodic uh, basis yes. right for viewing to be spelled out if you're renting out the unit but during the period you may have potential buying coming in uh, yes. was, right right okay. of viewing exactly I think this is something that uh, most of landlords don't know that you know the right of viewing okay. four weeks before your uh, expiration of your tenancy mm -hmm. it's just something in addition yeah. uh, as a landlord or the agent of the landlord, you can actually go to the property and uh, you know bring uh, potential tenants to come and see. Why? Because it gives you you know time so that you know getting a tenant is not easy. Correct. So especially in the essentially, soft market, yeah. someone else can come and view and see you know whether after this term, this this expiration of the tenancy, you know someone else can occupy it. So it's your right as a uh, landlord. Okay. This, this right of viewing. All right. Okay. So if the tenant is late in paying rent, what should you and should not do? Definitely don't change the lock and just lock it and yeah. throw everything out of the unit. Oh yes, that's another thing. Don't uh. cut the electricity bill, uh, what, uh, electricity supply and water supply. Oh without, really? Yes. Even with the police <laughs> report? That is unlawful. Unless, uh, obviously the authorities do it, it's different. You know? Or if they don't pay their uh, water bill and electricity bill, obviously then it will be cut off automatically. But the problem with TNB, even if we pay a deposit for let's say for 400 ringgits, uh, yeah. the electricity bill can go up to 2,000, 3,000 and DNB is not doing much yes, of the work. We and note, <laughs> we note that as well. <laughs> so sometimes uh, when the tenant is late in paying, uh, we got double surprises. Mm. One is the outstanding rent and the other one the outstanding amount due to TNB. Yeah. So they, I think there's a frustration that the, the so lot of landlords... So what you could do, because essentially the bills all come on the landlord name, not on the tenant name, mm. right? So essentially you can lodge a police report, right? And say that, uh, you know, that the, the payment is supposed to be made by the tenant and not you, okay? And obviously send it to TNB and see whether in that legal way, whether they I can... I don't think any tenants will be doing that. Uh, <laughs> not a tenant, I mean... Uh, as a landlord. Oh, as a landlord. As a landlord, because the name, uh, the bills are all on the landlord's name, okay. not on the tenant. Let me clarify a bit. I rent the property to you. Mm. You have been late in paying rent, not responsive. I'm lodged a police report mm. telling the whole situation. So even with this, if I go to TNB, mm. even the account is under my name. Yes. I can't cut it off legally. It's for them to make the decision, <laughs> the TNB to make the decision. Ah. Yes, usually uh, after you know they will give a notice that you know if you've been late for payment, electricity will be cut off or water will be cut off. But they but have to take the. But step. what happened? The tenant has been paying the electricity, but just not paying my rent. Uh, then it's a different situation. Then you, that's why you cannot just cut off if it's just a rent. It's still unlawful. Mm. Oh, you give a leeway to the tenant by staying the unit. I as long as pay the electricity bill. Mm. So that's why your tenancy agreement's got to be very proper to stipulate all this. So I was just exploring the option. A lot of things are sometimes as a landlord, we, we are not prepared when the situation arises. And when it happens, distress. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We are supposed to do this, we want to do this, but it's unlawful. Mm. So I think the session I think is very informative and yeah. I think probably can serve us landlord a lot of trouble <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> in the future. Okay, I think we pretty much cover most of the thing. And don't forget, if you are watching this, share the post. And this week, we are giving out lucky prize again. And announcements will be made next week. Those people who share the most about this session, uh, they will walk away for with a Sony wireless speaker. Okay? If you have more questions that you want to post for the next session, please put it in the comments. Uh, we will take note of that so that we can come up with better sessions too fulfill your needs. Thank you, Sean, for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. See you. Okay, bye.